As jy ooit gewonder het, hoekom is my skouwers so groot, man, ek gebruik hulle baie, maar baie min op een kanoe. Um, and now I wonder, is it a canoe? Welcome, Roger Barrow. Um, and it must be, it's, it's a privilege having you here. South Africa's national rowing coach um, with the credentials. A big welcome, thanks for visiting us. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, is it, and rowing, is that this, you think this is because of rowing? Shoulders? No, that's probably swimming. I would say you need a bit of work on your legs. Rowing is a, a lower, lower limb um, sport, and you've got to be very strong in your legs and your lower back. You said people don't know that. We're going to get to that. But just as a background, just tell me about yourself. Where did you grow up? Where are you from? Um, I'm from Johannesburg. I went to school in Johannesburg until I was around 13, mm -hmm. and then I wanted to go to boarding school. I wanted to get away from my family, I guess. <laughs> and uh, um, I went down to the Eastern Cape to St. Andrews down in Grahamstown. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a great time, and that's when I learned about rowing. Mm -hmm. I was a cricket player. Um, was what I learned as a, as a school kid here in Johannesburg, and then I fell in love with rowing, being on the water, being down by the ocean, and uh, from there, rowing took off for me. And it's, it's, it's probably going to be a stupid thing to say, but rowing is a bit of an English sport. What I mean is, you know, the, the way I grew up is like, you play rugby and you do this typical sports, but with rowing, like you said, the moment you said Grahamstown, the moment you say, you know, English boarding school, um, it's rowing. Is it still kind of only more English schools involved if you look at the development of rowing? Yeah, definitely in South Africa, it's definitely that way. I mean, it, it started from the private schools. Mm. It's an expensive sport. Mm. Um, we've now got around 60 schools rowing in South Africa. Oh, that's um, and it's coming to government schools and more people having access to it. I guess it's a small sport here because we don't have a lot of water. Mm. Um, so it's mainly a European sport. Um, the big European countries are very good at rowing because they have tons of water, and it's from the Vikings. So the Norwegians and the Swedish are very good rowers. So from now I'm going to call you Ragnar, not <laughs> Roger. <laughs> quite correct. <laughs> so um, if we look at the scene in South Africa, like we said, it's, a, it's quite small in terms of marketing. It's like, you know, some sports just don't get the attention and the budget. Um, is, it, is it going to stay a problem? Yeah, look, after London, when we won a gold there, I thought my world would change and the next year would be easier. We would have um, a lot of sponsorship. And funny enough, 2013 was my hardest year. We were bankrupt. Um, no sponsors came on board. So to answer your question, is it going to change? I don't think so. Mm. Um, South Africa's mad about rugby, football and cricket. Mm. And those are the primary sports. And I think rowing is such a small sport. Um, we've just got to keep performing at the Olympics. Mm. And we only have one big competition every four years. Mm. And we've got to make sure we put the medals on the tables every four years, just to be mentioned. The frustration coming you know, with that, is it, is it big or you accept it? Listen, this is a niche sport for now, but I'm growing it every day. Yeah, look, I'm, I've accepted it. 2013, as I said, I probably cried every week, mm. uh, real tears. Mm. I mean, I find it really tough to keep going and staying motivated. Mm. But on the flip side, it taught us a lot of core values. Yes. So the guys I'm working with, I know they're doing it for the right reasons. Yes. It's not the paycheck at the end of the month. Mm. So I'm getting a lot of satisfaction the last four years of knowing this mm. and the work that we do. And we, we're a small little pocket of excellence, and it's great taking on the big countries. Mm. To take on Great Britain and New Zealand, um, Australia, and yeah. to beat them, I think that's where we're fueled by. Yeah. Um, um, so we, we often believe it's the, the tide is a little bit against us, mm. but when you overcome the tide, it's that much more rewarding. Mm. And now, as you say, the, the moment I'm thinking, if, every time I see rows and I'm thinking rowing, it's, it's gentlemen, you know? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the same vibe as, as the cricketers. It's a, it's a gentleman's sport, yeah? Um, is that the experience? It's a certain type of guy that really gets into, into rowing. Well, uh, I don't think it's quite the gentleman. I, I often look for the thugs. Yeah, um, yeah. I've got to find the hard, the really tough guys. I think rowing can, can be compared to rugby, but it hasn't got the contact. Mm. But to endure a 2,000 meter race, you go through many energy systems and it's, it's brutal. Mm. Um, I think one of our Olympians, Lawrence Britton, who won silver, has overcome cancer. Sure. And he's so strong in the mind. And that, having cancer certainly made him stronger. Um, so it's that sort of guy you need, hangover determined, um, and a slight little bit of thuggery, um, and knowing that the odds are against him. You've got to be tough. Ons gesels met Roger Barrow en hy sit Afrika sy nationale africhter en ons gesels een bykie later nog verder. Welkom terug by die groot ontbuit. Ons gesels Roger Barrow en dit is Rowing South Africa's coach en ek moet vir jou sê, hy het al ouwens uh, afgerig wat goud gewend het, silver gewend, Olympiese atlete. Uh, welcome back. I just want to find out, you, you made a comment earlier to say, I said big shoulders and I thought, Rowing is in the shoulders, and then you changed everything in one sentence. It's a misperception. 
Yeah, a lot of people always comment that the rowers don't have big shoulders. Yeah. Um, and it's very much about the legs, um, hence why we do a lot of cycling. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to be very strong in the quads and the lower back, um, because that's what propels the boat. The arms are, are simple links between your body and the boat um, to transfer mm. energy systems. For you now, I mean, after your team, it's gold, it's Olympics, you make an international name for yourself. The pressure that comes with that all of a sudden, um, with the excitement, was that tough to adapt to that? Yeah, I mean, it was tough, and I think um, we're still getting to grips of it. Um, but I, I try and not focus on all the stuff around it. Um, I'm very much a, a simple person, and I worry about each day at a time, mm. and I worry about how good we are on this day, and I can only control what I can control. Mm. But I'm not there to, to get any accolades or try and be in the limelight. It's more about the performances. Mm. Um, the athletes are the, the people who, who really stand on the podiums and win the medals. Mm. Um, so I certainly see myself as someone behind the scenes, and I guess that's how I cope with that side of, of life. Mm. Um, I feel the pressure now because we've got another Olympics coming up, mm. so I'm hard at work trying to get a, a new team um, prepared for that. And then we, 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 I made a mistake and I said uh, canoeing, and you immediately said, no, we're doing rowing. <laughs> and then it dawned on me how big difference the two, it's a big difference because if you take the, the, the Berg River um, or the Doozy, you know, and, and the rowing like in the dams, I just want to see the, the basic differences. Yeah, completely different. It's rugby, f football, yep, um, or to, to cricket. Um, we go backwards. We row in big boats. Um, See my brain, and yeah. uh, we mainly use our legs, and we have longer oars. Yes. Our oars are around three and a half meters long. And um, we also do uh, on rowing courses. So it's like a swimming pool mm. over two kilometers that we row in eight lanes across. Yeah. And um, obviously, the, the canoeing is either sprinting or it's mainly down rivers. If you talk about training, uh, in Pretoria, there's, is, there's some, some big dams. You say you need quite a big space, a lot of water, if you say two and a half k's. Yeah, it's very difficult. I struggle to find dams. So mm. we rode Rudaplat Dam, where we've got a 2,000 meter course, and we can do six kilometers in one go. So okay. for the endurance training. Yes. The guys row about 200 and 220 k's a week. So if you're on a small dam, to do 220 k's, you'll be turning the whole time. Yes. Yeah, and um, we go up to Lesotho. So a lot of the water we drink in Johannesburg and Pretoria is from Katsi and Mahali yes, Katsi Dam, them, yes. and those are 60 kilometers long. And we spend about um, three, four months a year up there training because it's good, good quality water. Mm. So we need a lot of water for training. Does the oxygen help as well because it's so high? Yeah, so the, the altitude is 2,000 meters yes. above sea level, and we're there to try and build hemoglobin and red blood cells. Um, and that's why, like the Kenyan, the good Kenyan runners, the reason why they're good is that altitude, and we go up to altitude to try and get some enhancements. It's, it feels like I missed my, my sport. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a problem, yeah. In terms of, of, of the rowers and even our Olympian rowers, can they do it full time or do they still need a day job? You know? No, the, the training regime's tough. We, we're training around 25 to 28 hours a week. Okay. So that's full time. Yes, full and time. they've got to recover. Yes. So um, I try and find them really young that when they're still students at UCT or they're here at Tux, um, and then they grow into the sport. And the trick is to find when they finish studying that we can find them some money and they've had some success as a successful rower mm. to try and earn a small income. Mm. That's amazing. So now if you, you know, just like a couple of names, potential guys that you can see it's going to become rowing legends. Are there some that you can think Yeah, of? I mean, there's a girl, Nicole Van Vake. Um, she's here at Tux. Um, she won a silver medal last year, and she's still very young. Mm. And I see a very bright future for her. Um, a new boy who's come from um, the Cape, um, from Somerset School, Nick Oberholzer. Mm. I think he's going to be a future champion. Um, and Vaughan Boertis. Mm. But it's hard to say, you know, it's, it, there's so many other guys also wanting their seats. Mm. And I love to create an environment where, you know, sport isn't fair. Mm. So you've got to create this tough environment where there are lots of people fighting for each other's seats. Mm. But those are our top three performers from 20-year-olds um, last year. So I'm hoping to see good things this year and, and going forward to Tokyo. So I'm, I'm too late. I missed this, being in my 40s. I missed my window. Oh, veterans maybe. <laughs> veterans for sure and masters. <laughs> masters. We are going to go further with Roger Barrow and he is Afrika's Africa van of rowing. As you know, we are going to make it now as bekend, we are going to go with Roger Barrow and he has the toekening gekry as the world's best rooi africhter. So just like, I want that to sink in because that's like winning your own Olympic medal as, as a coach. You know, the moment that happened being awarded the best coach in rowing in the world. And we're talking Oxford and Harvard. You know what I mean? It's big. How did that feel? 
Yeah, I only found out in December, and after the Olympics, I had mixed emotions of, of success, winning one medal, and I obviously wanted to win mm. more. But I was driving actually back to home from Pretoria, and I heard in the car. And I actually, I, ne I had to stop and just on the side of the road and realize that I had won it. Um, I was on a short list of six. Mm. And the legends that I look up to and mentors are all on the list of, of coaches. So for me, it was a massive, a massive thing. But I've got to give a lot of credit to the team behind me. Mm. Um, they've also put in a huge amount. Mm. It wasn't just myself. Um, it was other coaches involved, our doctor, our physiologist, and of, of course the athletes. Mm. So it's, it's more a team award, but a lot of pride for me, for sure. Mm. If you think the guys you coach and behind your back what, they, what, what would they say about you? Like, tough? Uh, how's your approach? Yeah, look, I, I do say I'm, I'm, I'm quite tough. Um, <laughs> they say I'm sometimes unapproachable. I feel I'm quite a nice guy and, and fairly <laughs> approachable with sort of things. But um, I guess they know that I stay, hold the line. Yeah. I, I don't give in easily. And I'm always there. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a philosophy of watching all the training. Mm -hmm. um, if the athlete's going to be putting it in, I've got to be there half an hour earlier, getting ready, getting prepared. And um, there's no compromises. Mm. Now, corporate South Africa, without corporate South Africa, I think it, you know, things will just die out, um, the sports that's struggling. Uh, R&B came you know, on board with you guys. What did that mean to you? Yeah, I think it was big. Um, I think at first when the, the approach happened and they, they made these amazing ads, um, that the synergy between corporate banking and rowing. And uh, it's amazing that they do work. And the ads all started and, and the relationships building. So it's going from strength to strength. And I think for the whole team to know that there's a big bank supporting you, you're going to feel better about what you're doing. Um, you know you're not sort of working hand to hand and day to day, hoping you survive. Now there's actually someone power behind. So that gives a lot of confidence to myself. And and the team members realizing that they've actually got now a sponsor. Mm. And now after being, you know, awarded like, or just like uh, the prize of the best coach in, in the world, you will be headhunted. So um, the prize that I'm going to give you is this table you can take with you. Thank you. Saying no to Australia. Um, <laughs> that is the biggest uh, achievement for me that I just, you know, looking at you. How was that turning something like that down? Yeah, it was, I actually flew over and I took my wife and I've got three little kids. Yes. And so it was going to be a big move for our family. Mm. Um, and that's what I wanted to ensure because that comes first in my life. Yes. Um, to ensure that that was going to be happy. And it was too far from home. Mm. And I think we, we are fooled by thinking that South Africa's got problems. Mm. It's obviously got political issues, but it's the most amazing country to live in. Mm. And the biggest thing for me is every time I do travel around the world, I'm so happy when I return home. Mm. And when we were in Sydney for two days, I realized I didn't want, I'm not, that feeling's not going to be the same mm. when I go overseas to Europe and return home. This isn't home for me. South Africa's home. Mm. Um, so that, at, at the end, the decision was quite easy. Yes. Sure, it would have been a challenge working with all the money they have, the athletes yes. they have, yeah. but um, I didn't want to leave the team that I've created here, mm. and um, I wanted to stay at home. Sure. And then the last question, um, your dreams still, you know, as a coach, um, where do you see yourself in 10 years and the sport in 10 years? Yeah, look, I want to win. I mean, that's the bottom line. That's what drives me, uh, winning Olympic medals. Um, I've tasted two of them, and uh, I want to win more of them, and I want to win the gold color. Um, so I guess, deep down, I also want to perfect the sport we're doing um, and really be good at what we do um, and uh, grow the sport in South Africa some more. Um, we can, South Africans have a a very special quality in life where the, when we go into international sport, we might not always be the best prepared or have mm. the most money, but we always rise to the occasion. Mm. And I don't know whether it's a South African thing or just where we live, mm. but that, 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 that cult, or that, that's what I want to be part of. Thank you so much it's, uh, for your time, Roger. Um, it's amazing, and I hope it just goes you know, bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, thank you very much for the support. Oh, it's a pleasure. And this was now Roger Barrow, as you heard, this is the best Afrachter, Rooie Afrachter in the world. Geweest.